Okay. For the second time again, we are in a Starship SN10 countdown for its 10 kilometer hop. This is the third Starship prototype that's going to attempt this. We had SN8, which got ridiculously close. SN9, which got ridiculously close, but slightly less close. And now SN10, and they're actually changing the test flow for this. Uh, the landing burn's going to be different. They're going to ignite all three Raptors for the landing burn, then go down to two, and then maybe go down to one. We're not too sure. And like we've said before, this is a test. SpaceX learns by testing, and this might not succeed. Could blow up on landing again. Hell, it could even blow up earlier in flight, and that's fine. That's how they learn. SN11 is pretty much done with its construction, nearly ready to roll out, and I think we only have one question when it comes to SN11, and that is, when hop? I reckon later this month. What do you think? Two Starship hops in one month? Whew. Second time today. I really hope this goes. I am mid-moving house right now, and I need tomorrow free. <laughs> Two minutes and 55. So again, we're going to be doing the uh, belly flop maneuver. So the vehicle is going to ascend upwards to 10 kilometers, turning off engines on the way up there. It's going to slow down at 10 kilometers, transition to horizontal, start falling, using those four flaps to control itself like a skydiver coming down at terminal velocity, which is minus slower than you think. 30 seconds. Finishing up propellant loading, and we are now closing the fuel and locks fill valves to the vehicle. Awesome. Everything continues to look good on Starship 10. Awesome. And then it's going to suddenly reignite its free Raptors, flip, divert a little bit, and have to drift back, and hopefully, if we're lucky, touch down. And not fall over. Although, if it does fall over, but it touched down soft, that's still an improvement on the last two tests, so they will be mega happy with that. I personally really want to see it get further than the last two tests. But if it doesn't, that's okay. But I really, 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 really want to. Even if it blows up on a soft touchdown, even if it comes in at a bit of an angle and just sort of goes... Boop, that's fine by me. Got those stubby little landing legs in the skirt, which are just gonna flip out. Everything quiet now, too quiet. Okay, we are coming up on one minute. This is the bit where it it all starts to get one a little bit real. Starship 10 continue to look good. Ready for its oh first boy. Plate. Right. Let's do this. They're holding it one minute. They're holding it one minute. But the count might resume. Yep, yeah, count resumed. So they have these decision points um, where someone needs to click. Yes, I assume. And that's what you're seeing there threw me off on the very first SN8 attempt because we got down to T minus 13 seconds and then we held there. And that was an agonizing two seconds of my life. We are now at 134 beats per minute. Okay, good luck SN10, please go today. 230. So we had a abort earlier, right after ignition due to a off nominal thrust. Coming. Something was out of family and they've changed the limiters on that now. And so hopefully we're going to get a successful lift off today. And here we go. Do you want us 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 8 7, 7, 6, 6 5, 4, 4 3, 3, 2, 2 1. 1. Are we going to get a lift off? We have a lift off! Okay, we are committed to a flight now. So this is either going to be. A starship that lands or a starship that goes boom. And there are three Raptors glowing strong. That is a gorgeous shot. Oh wow, SpaceX have upped their game for this. Oh, 
Oh wow, they have upped the game for their uh, their cameras on on this one. T plus thirty seconds, Starship Ten has lift off. It's headed to ten kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> on its test flight from Boca Chica. Beautiful, and we're just coming up on dust now, so it looks absolutely beautiful. 151 beats per minute. This bit, the, the very first time I was out of my chair screaming and shouting already, but we've seen this. It's really those last, those last 20 seconds of flight are where it all comes down now, but still, all the same, this is absolutely... Wow, that is beautiful. And again, three Raptors all, all firing now for over a minute. That in itself is a great achievement. The more burn time they can get on these Raptor engines, the better. Because at, at McGregor, where they test these engines, they can only fire them for a certain amount of time because the tanks there only allow us a certain amount of time to fire them. So these flights are actually the longest that these engines will have fired continuously. Here we are, a minute and 34 seconds. We'll be coming up on uh, on one of the Raptor shutdowns any second now. Okay. This tracking shot is absolutely incredible. up on T plus two minutes we're getting ready to transition from three engines to two engines firing on Starship we'll be shutting one engine off that's intentional okay here we go and there's the first Raptor shut off that fire in the engine bay completely normal all that is is hot gases from the shutdown just getting caught back up in the engine bay Oh, wow. We've got two Raptors. One of them looks a little bit funny. It's definitely... Mm, the exhaust on that, interesting. I wonder if... Uh, actually, you can see on the engine belts, they're slightly... One's brighter than the other. I wonder if they have an underperforming Raptor. Be interesting to see. But hopefully. Three, plus three minutes and counting. Starship coming up on eight kilometers altitude. We're getting ready to shut down the second engine. This is intentional. Okay, second engine shutdown coming up. Uh, this this new landing burn will hopefully give some extra redundancy oh, for engine nice. out. Very nice. That was beautiful. So yeah, that's what happened with SN9. It lost one of its two Raptors right on landing, which led to it not making it to the pad. Well, it made it to the pad, but not sticking the landing. This new free engine landing burn means theoretically they can lose a Raptor and still be okay. So we're going to be coming up on Apogee soon, and that Raptor's going to kick to start the flip. We'll see some RCS action up at the nose cone and the base. Okay, I'm going to come back up when we hit 10 kilometers, right about be... in three seconds. We're going to be falling back down. We heard some uh, hot mic action Coming there up from John. Plus four minutes. We're at 10 kilometers. We've gone into the hover. We're still being powered by the single Raptor engine. 155 beats per minute, which I think this might top out at. Okay, that vent is normal. That's them dumping liquid oxygen out of the vehicle now. They want more fuel in it so that the thrust to mass ratio on liftoff is higher. And there it is, engine shut down, and we are transitioning to the belly flop. So those four aerodynamic fins now going to be doing their work to keep the vehicle stable like a skydiver. Oh boy. Remember, without those fins, it would just be going tumbling right now. They are moving fast, powered by Tesla motors. Transition, it's flipped to the horizontal mode. Beginning the descent back to the landing zone. Okay. This is what it boils down to now. And remember, if they don't stick it, it's fine. SN11 is coming up, but we really want to see them get closer. I really, really want to see them at least touch the pad with a low velocity. <laughs> Come on, SN10. Again, 
again, these dust shots, just absolutely beautiful. Okay, we will be coming up on Raptor Relight and the Flip Maneuver now. Up on five minutes, 45 seconds. We're this is untested as well, because they've not tried relighting three engines, three engines at, at the, the same time sequence. before. It'll culminate with landing on the landing pad in Boca Chica. And here we go. Okay, two engines, three Raptor engines, three good Raptors. We have a flip, we have a flip. That's a low velocity, they've shut down two engines. I don't know if they meant to shut down two or one. That's a low velocity. They're hovering. This is fantastic already. They're already doing better. This is already an improvement. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, fuck yeah! Ten, you beauty! Show me it. Show me it. It's standing. There's a fire in the engine bay, but it's standing. She touched down. It could fall over now. It could fall over. It could go. It could go up in a fucking. It could boom, massive explosion now, but progress again on the third flight and it is at an angle but <laughs> that's going to be the landing maneuver that takes us Third to Mars someday time, baby as the saying goes we've had a successful soft touchdown on the landing pad at camping a beautiful test flight of Starship 10 as a reminder the key point of today's test flight was to gather the data on controlling the vehicle while re-entering and we were successful in doing oh. so. We had a nominal ascent. We had the maneuver to place Starship horizontal when we reached 10 kilometers right on time. And then during the subsonic... Look at that! We had control of the vehicle using the front and aft flaps. I thought when two Raptors we went out, they were screwed. I was expecting them to be on... Um, I was expecting them to be going from three to two. Not, not two to... Not, not three to one. Oh! That's the money shot right there. Also, a congratulations to the team in Texas. They still no, nowhere near the little nine the meter circle they drew for it, but it's on the pad. That fire hose is doing its best, but the Texas team has several more suborbital test vehicles in build, with number eleven ready to roll out to the pad in the very near future. It only took them three times. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope you'll join us. This is why iterative testing works so well. This is why you fly. Fail fix, fly fail fix, because when you just, when, when you just have to sit down and do everything on paper for 10 years because you have bureaucracy expecting you to succeed immediately, it slows you down so much. Whereas if you accept failure, if you work from your failure, if you build from your failures and treat them not as, as, as nails in the coffin, but points to learn from and points to climb from, that is how you can build these systems and evolve them to do the impossible. SpaceX are revolutionizing launching stuff right now. Starship is going to revolutionize the launch market. More than a launch market, it's going to revolutionize what humanity is capable of. It will be a paradigm shift if it meets its goals. And even if it doesn't meet all of its goals, even if it meets like 10% of them, it will still by far be the most revolutionary vehicle in decades. In decades. We are watching the next Apollo program right before us, ladies and gentlemen, and none of the above. Humans are awesome. It just needed a little lesson from perseverance on how to stick the soft landings. They won't land every single one after this now. Just because they've landed SN10 doesn't mean that every single one is going to be successful. But that reliability rate is just going to keep on going up, baby. <sighs> Go SpaceX team. Go everyone in the aerospace industry. 
because you guys are pioneering magic. I'll catch you soon for whatever SN11 does. Layers. And of course, right after I stop recording, it goes big bada boom. But nevertheless, just like I said, excellent progress has been made today. Some new sites are going to focus on the fact that it just blew up. But they landed it. They landed it. Even if a landing leg failed or whatever happened, that can be fixed, just like they fixed the Raptor problems with SN8 and 9. Doing this in just three attempts is ridiculously impressive. <sighs> Absolutely fantastic. Great test, and I cannot wait for SN11. <sighs> anyway, this time properly, because I think it's blown up enough now. I don't think anything else is going to blow up. Catch you soon for the next test. Peace out.